five reasons why every black person should own a home. Spoiler alert, this has everything to do with creating generational wealth. Now, before we even get into this, let me just say that this video has nothing to do with excluding any other nationalities or backgrounds. It's just that we are right in the middle of Black History Month, and every morning when I wake up and I look in the mirror, I see a young black woman of African American ancestry, and I happen to know our story. As a real estate professional, I have a very unique perspective of understanding how home ownership impacts families. And so if you would, please take a few moments, join me in walking through five reasons why I believe every African-American, every black person should own a home. Reason number one, and arguably the strongest reason is to close the wealth gap. And believe me, there is a significant wealth gap. Uh, they call it the great wealth divide, but what do we mean when we say that? The wealth gap actually measures the difference between the median wealth of blacks and Latinos versus the median wealth of whites. Median just means middle. If you lay out uh, all the black people from end to end in a straight line, you pick that middle person. That middle person represents the median wealth of blacks. And just to continue with terminology briefly, when we're talking net worth, it's just total assets minus liabilities, your assets being the equity in your home, your um, retirement accounts, your, your cash, anything of value, minus your liabilities, which would be like student loans and credit card debt and your mortgage debt, et cetera. So assets minus liabilities is net worth, and that's actually what we're talking about. We're talking about measuring median wealth. Now, this particular statistic, this fact right here, actually startled me when I first learned about it. Median black net worth declined between 1983 and 2016. And initially it was challenging for me to believe because we're in an era of progress, right? I mean, we see so many uh, blacks moving forward and, and getting ahead. And I was caught off guard to find out that our net worth is not rising. It's actually going down and study after study after study has shown this. I wanna give you a, a physical depiction of one of these. Take a look at this, this visual. If this is the racial wealth divide has grown over the past three decades, look in the column that's headed white 1983, the median wealth for whites was 110,000. That actually went up over the next 30 years to increase to about 147,000. That's a significant increase over the years. If you go to the black column, go all the way down, there it is. In 1983, the median black wealth was $7,323, but then it dropped. Instead of going up, it actually had a decrease by about 50% to 3,557 in 2016. That's difficult to wrap our minds around, but it happened. I'm not gonna speculate as to all the reasons why. I will say that that housing market crash uh, in 2007 and 2008 did not do us any favors. Look at uh, the Latino column in 1983, about 4,200, but they went up over the past 30 years to about 6,500. So there is an upward trend, but this chart just shows that there is a lot of work to be done. The median African-American household net worth is projected to be zero by 2053. Things are not getting better for people of color. If anything, they're getting worse. So wrapping up reason number one, if I work on increasing my net worth, you work on increasing your net worth, and we can help as many people as possible acquire homes and build equity in their homes, that joint effort, we will all rise together and we can close that wealth gap. Reason number two, overcome systemic discrimination. We have this home buying system where you work hard, you save your money and achieve a decent financial status. 
you go to a mortgage lender, you apply for that mortgage, you get approved for that mortgage, you go find the perfect home, you buy that perfect home, and you live in it happily ever after. That's the way it's supposed to work. The problem is, is that this system that we have for buying a home has not worked the same way for everyone equally. But understand, it was the policy of the United States of America to discriminate against African Americans and people, uh, any other people of color, for buying homes until 1965. You can't just repeal that and say, okay, now everything is even. It's not. Allow me to give you a brief history lesson on this. As the Great Depression was ending, the United States needed a way to get the nation back on its feet. So they came up with the New Deal. And as part of the New Deal, specifically to impact housing and to get the housing inventory up, they rolled out the National Housing Act of 1934 as a way to boost the housing market, to get new build, new construction coming out, and to get lenders to lend again. But this was an example of systemic discrimination because they mapped out the cities in the United States. They color coded them with four colors. One of the colors was red. And if you lived in a red neighborhood, banks were discouraged from lending to you. It called you a high credit risk. It labeled those neighborhoods as hazardous and dangerous. Well, guess who lived in those neighborhoods? minorities and other less desirable immigrants lived in those red lined neighborhoods. It made it next to impossible to get mortgage loans, regardless of a person's great credit score, regardless of how much money they made, regardless of the value of the home that they wanted to purchase. If you were in that neighborhood, it was next to impossible to get a mortgage loan. And that left decades and decades of minorities unable to purchase and enforce them into a lifestyle of not owning homes for generations. This was ended in 1968 by the Fair Housing Act, but the long lasting impact of the National Housing Act still leaves us today with lower home values in minority neighborhoods and still racially segregated neighborhoods across our city. The funny thing is, is that even though we passed the Fair Housing Act of 1968, it is very difficult to legislate away systemic discrimination, something that's just kind of built into the system. I'm going to give you a few examples of lenders who in recent times have been, uh, for lack of a better term, caught with their hands in the cookie jar. Uh, the examples that I'm giving here are of Wells Fargo and Citibank. In 2012, Wells Fargo actually had to pay $175 million uh, after it was discovered that they were charging higher fees and rates to minorities. There were 34,000 cases of those charging higher fees and rates than white customers with similar credit profiles. Likewise, there were four employees of Wells Fargo, kind of whistleblowers from the inside, that confirmed that the bank intentionally steered minority buyers into higher cost loans because of their race and ethnicity. And that was recently in 2018. That lawsuit was actually brought out by the city of Sacramento in California. There's also Citibank that did not equally offer certain mortgage discounts to all city customers, thereby adversely affecting some customers based on their race, color, national origin, and sex. Again, a direct violation of the Fair Housing Act of 1968. Again, it's very difficult to legislate away systemic discrimination. So have there been barriers, um, policy barriers, economic barriers, from the US government all the way to lending institutions that were intentionally put in place to deter the black and Latino home ownership rate. Yes, there have been, but is that an excuse? No, in fact, you can never win the game if you don't play the game. So it's so important for us to go out there and own homes because in doing so, you will be doing your part in helping to fight and overcome systemic discrimination. Reason number three, invest in our communities. 
And your community is wherever you choose to call home. So I'm not relegating you to a specific part of town. There's no our community, their community. Wherever you choose to call home is your community and where your investment should be. And home ownership plays such a vital role to ensuring that that community where you choose to live is strong and stable. In fact, the mere fact that you purchase a home in that community helps because you are contributing to the tax base of that community. Your property taxes and home ownership will go towards funding the public school, the community college, the hospitals, and the more your area can increase its tax base, the more available dollars there are to spend on those worthwhile programs. You know, another thing I love about being a homeowner in my neighborhood is that I have opportunity to see who those local entrepreneurs are, uh, and those local mom and pop shops are. And a lot of times I will choose to support them in addition to my normal chain restaurants and, and super stores. I still do that as well. But at my discretion, I can also support local up and coming entrepreneurs. And you have the opportunity to do that in your neighborhood as well. Also, studies have shown that there is increased volunteerism, local boys and girls club and YMCAs when people own homes in certain neighborhoods. There's improved health and less crime. I always encourage homeowners, once you take roots and get established in that neighborhood, go ahead and get involved, whether it's the local crime watch or your local little league football team, but find an opportunity. You can either write a check or use your time, but get involved in some way in your community and invest. So go ahead and buy that home take roots and get established in that community because where you're living is where your heart is going to be. It's where your tax dollars is going to be. It's where you're going to be supporting local businesses. And it's more than just a sense of pride and ownership. It's more of a protective thing because you're saying, this is my community. This is where I live. I'm not going to let anything go down where I live. So it's a great thing. It's a great to feel a part of something that is bigger than you. Go ahead and own that home in your community. Reason number four is carry the torch. I believe we all have a responsibility to go further and to do more than the generation before us. I want to talk to you about eight ways a home can help you carry the torch well. Now, this is all about using the equity in your home, and you kind of have to think outside of the box and be creative. The most important thing is to have a plan. So imagine this in terms of you carrying your torch well. Uh, you can help pay for quality education for your child, whether that's primary school or college. Maybe you could eliminate having to take out so much student loan debt. You could start that business that you've always wanted to start because maybe, just maybe, the bankers are not standing in line to give you a loan. Invest in yourself. Use that equity in your home to do so. Maybe there are unplanned expenses, for example, a medical emergency, or maybe your mom and dad are aging and they have to come live with you. Whatever that is, you can avoid burdensome debt just by tapping into the equity in your home. You can pay off debt. You can invest wisely. You can do home improvements. It's called forced depreciation. If you make the right strategic upgrades in your home, maybe you increase the value from 200000 to 240000 That's great. That's building equity. Or maybe, like number seven says, you could give a loan to someone else. You can be a helping hand to somebody else, and maybe that's your own children. The most important thing is just to be ready for opportunity. The equity in your home will give you options. Just have a plan, be strategic, and use it wisely. So I know that uh, owning a home is not the only way to quote unquote, carry the torch well, but it's an important way because it gives you access to funds that you may not have been able to access otherwise. And if you apply those funds wisely and strategically, you have such a great opportunity at your disposal to move forward in your life, but also the life of the generations that come after you. So owning a home is so important. Our parents, our great grandparents, 
they did what they could with what they had. And I will be the first to say, I know in my own experience, I am standing on their shoulders. Truly I am. And they are passing the torch on to me and I'm doing all that I know to do to run my race well. And I plan to set up my next generation to run well. And I know that using equity in our home and using it in the way that we've planned, it's going to make great strides for our home and for our generations. And I wish the same for you. And we wanna help as many people as possible do the same thing. And reason number five, be the solution. Now, when I say be the solution, it's really an all encompassing statement. It's saying that when you choose to buy a home, something as simple as buying a home, because we all need a place to live, you are being a part of the solution. You are increasing your net worth, thereby closing the wealth gap. You are helping to fight systemic discrimination that we've already talked about. You're doing your part in joining that fight. You are investing in a community, thereby making it better just because you're there. You are carrying the torch because when you use that equity in your home and you apply it wisely towards an endeavor that is moving you forward but also moving your generations forward so just by owning a home you are being the solution and that is why i believe every black person should own a home the five reasons why every black person should own a home